Hello, this is Jim Matthews from GlassHoppa.com. Today, exploring the use of fiber paper to create functional cavities in kiln-formed glass. Call it fiber forming. That has a nice ring. But really, we're just creating a shape we can drape over. Drape being the nomenclature for slumping over a mold instead of into it. What we'll do is create a design on a canvas and fire that. Then, in a second firing, we'll drape it over a stack of fiber paper to form the pocket and fuse it to a base plate. Once you grasp the technique, the variations are unlimited, and the form is largely independent of the design. You can pretty these up however you please. I wanted my wall pocket to complement the flowers in the vase, not compete with them for attention and I wanted it to look like glass, not ceramic or plastic. Plus, it's going on a wall, so it'll need to reflect a lot of light. To accomplish all those things, I decided to use clear glass with plenty of texture, starting with a 7.5 inch square as my canvas. This is all homemade torch-pulled stringer, made exactly as shown in the earlier segment, cleverly titled Torch-Pulled Stringer. If your pieces aren't flat enough, which can be frustrating, you can use the torch on low flame to bend them to your liking. Once I was okay with the arrangement of the stringers, I tacked each one down with a drop of adhesive at both ends. The stuff never lies perfectly flat, so you have to make sure the glue is going on a spot where the stringer is actually contacting the glass. Where they overlap, I glue at the intersection. My leaves are just little spearheads, and very casual ones at that. I like to cut a quick circle which gives me one continuous curved edge and then each bite of the nippers makes the other curved edge. Nothing important about the quality of the circle here but I happen to have a lens cutter. It has a scoring wheel mounted on an adjustable arm attached to a spring-loaded axis. Pretty simple. I wouldn't recommend buying one of these unless you foresee cutting a lot of little circles. There's our score. Usually I'll just tap these because, like I said, nothing important about the quality of the circle here. And the smaller the circle, the less flex there is in the sheet, so the less forgiving it'll be to this kind of thumb pressure running. Then a nip around the perimeter creates a dozen or so little green spearheads that'll work as leaves. I'm not trying to recreate any specific botanical species here, just making stems and leaves. Get a few in place, secure them with adhesive if you like, and carry on. Once it seemed right and everything was secure, I started thinking about where the texture should go. I wanted a balance of texture and open space with no discernible pattern to it. So I stared at it for a minute or two, then grabbed a skinny sharpie and just sketched something out. There's my outline. I'm going to fill these spaces with coarse frit and leave the internal area open. This is clear, mostly, with some very pale color, some citron and some iridescent straw. Don't fret about colors or sizes or anything right now. All that will be detailed on the blog. I did screen this frit to remove the fines, the smallest pieces, and I tweezered out the largest chunks so I have a reasonably uniform particle size. Go ahead and be generous here. We want that texture. This is cheap hairspray poured from the pump bottle into this handy little applicator. Mom can't figure out where it all goes. I do take care to keep the frit off the stems and leaves. Okay, let's chat about how we're going to fire this sucker. The first firing will be a tack fuse, so the thickness variation you see in profile will be preserved. It won't matter much in the heating stage because all we've got is a bunch of individual little pieces of glass. They'll expand independently of each other. 
but once it's fused into one piece of glass, it'll be a piece that varies from single thickness to double or more in spots. If it's allowed to cool too quickly, the thinner areas will contract faster than the thicker ones, creating tension between them and causing breakage. So in the cooling stage, we'll go extra slow, more so than we would if the piece were a uniform one or two layers thick. Got that? And of course, we always try to remember to take a shelfie. Having a before picture can be very instructive. Okay, let's see what we got. Looks much like it did when we put it in, which is exactly what a tack fuse is all about. Just stick everything together with little deformation. We'll lop off these sticky out things and clean up the edges a little bit. And then it will be time to get serious about fiber forming. This is off the shelf eighth inch fiber paper. And I want to make a pocket that's about 5 eighths inch deep, 16 millimeters. Now this fiber is actually thicker than eighth of an inch, so it's only going to take three layers, I figure, to give me adequate depth. And we're going to need a base plate. It'll serve as the backside of our vase. Should be the same size as the original canvas. Now center your block of fiber between the sides of the base plate. Make sure it overlaps the top edge a little bit. This will be the opening of your pocket and you don't want the rim to droop down. See how I've got it jutting out some? Lay your face down. Line it up as best you can. We're going to form the face into a pocket and bond it to the base in the same firing. You could drape the face by itself and then cold fuse it to the base plate with silicone afterwards. I tried it both ways and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Either way, we're going to get some narrowing in the face as it slumps. As the glass folds down and reshapes to the sides of our mold, the edges will naturally draw in. But less than you might think because the hot glass will stretch some and we'll design a firing schedule to encourage that stretch, to minimize the amount of narrowing. And I remind myself of the thickness variation issue. It still exists and now it requires even more sensitivity in firing because now it's a solid piece of glass. It needs to be heated and cooled extra slowly. We can't allow those thin areas to expand faster than the thicker ones or we're looking at a disappointing result. Well, it's intact. Let's clean it up and take a closer look. Look at the edges. See how they've drawn in a little? The bottom too. It's not a complete deal killer, but I like a nice clean edge. When you're squaring a project in a tile saw, find your straightest edge and then trim two sides square to it. That way you know you've got two parallel sides and can square the last side up to them. Drilling? I marked a line a half inch below the top edge and equidistant from the insides of the pocket. Then I made tiny dry starts with the drill to mark my spots in case the sharpie dots wash away. Add moisture to cover and bring on the hole poker. This is a standard off-the-shelf Dremel tool. You know the drill. I have a flex shaft attachment just for convenience. Could have poured that water a little deeper. You need to keep your hole and your drill bit wet. Now these are pilot holes to start. I'll go back with a slightly larger bit once I have these done. And this part? Heck, I don't know. There's probably a better way. So there we go. 
I think we accomplished what we set out to. Holds water too. I tested it. Oops. Forgot something. I picked these up at a local bead shop. Little dab of silicone. One's probably enough. Nah, I can't stand it. Gotta have another. Can you have too many ladybugs? Probably never know till you try. Now take a look at this. This is the one I made by slumping the face by itself and then bonding it to a base plate afterwards with silicone. See how the top is slightly narrower than the bottom? What I did was trace the face after the pocket was formed, then cut a base to match and sealed them together with a bead of silicone. Thing is, you don't notice it at all once the flowers are added, and this way you can skip the tile saw. But, look at this. In the right light, the silicone looks like a gluey film of goop, which I guess is what it is. You don't see it hanging on the wall, but I'd be afraid someone considering buying this would hold it up and be turned off by the yuck. So, rule of thumb, if the glass is clear, avoid the smear. This one needs some ladybugs, doesn't it? That'll do it.